Well, hey there everyone. If you haven't already guessed, I'm doing something from the Beauty and the Beast today. But not what you think. So, the other day, well, I'm gonna tell ya, I was at another thrift store. That's a surprise. <laughs> and I found this beautiful green fabric that it was just sitting there and there was a ton of it. So I had to get it. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this ton of fabric? And I was trying to think of characters that had a green dress. So I was looking up on Google and I came across a photo of this bell dress that was green that she wore for like two seconds. <laughs> she wore it when Beast was in the cartoon, when Beast was first showing her the, um, the library. And then that was it. But when you thrift fabric, you gotta do weird sewing projects. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing Belle's random green dress from the cartoon Beauty and the Beast. Also shout out to my lovely best friend who got me this rose for one of my birthdays. I finally get to use it. I was looking at that costume and I had the perfect amount of fabric to do the skirt. And when I was looking at the picture, it looks like the puff sleeves and the skirt are the same color. But if you look closely at like the tight sleeves and the bias tape, they are a slightly different color, which means a different material. And then obviously the bodice is darker. So when I was looking at my fabric stash that I have all thrifted, I found this big lot of green material that I just got just, I was like, I can't pass this up. It was a, a goodwill. And there was this just massive hunk of fabric. So I ended up picking that up. And I know it's a little dark for the bodice, but I really liked the way the material felt. Like I knew it would make a good bodice. So I decided to use that. And then for the sleeves, I ended up picking up at another Goodwill a very shiny curtain. It was actually a curtain, but the reason that I liked it and I wanted to use it for the sleeves is because it was stretchy. So I can make it like tight on my arm and not like suffocate me. <laughs> So I ended up using that for the sleeve and then I had to go out and get a bias, like a, just a green bias tape because I knew that this sparkly curtain would not work because this type of material tends to roll up really badly and I knew I wasn't going to be able to fold it and make a bias tape. So I ended up going out and getting a sage, um, bias tape just for around the bodice. So you're just gonna have to hear me out on this one because when you're thrifting fabric, you only get this much to work with. So I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do a massive dress with this material and you gotta do with what you got. And I found this dress and I thought it was gonna be really fun to do. So um, gotta deal with it. Any hoody do, let's get ready for another random character So Yay! Sound like a ghoul when I did that. To draft the pattern for the bodice, I just went back to the good old reliable method of using my corset pattern to draft that because it fit me perfectly. So I ended up just, you know, fixing the neckline and then making the point to go down at the bottom. And that's how I was able to make the front and the back bodice pieces. Here I just cut out the both the lining and the outer layer of the same green material and then later I'm going to sew them together. For the sleeves it shows me cutting out just two but I actually went back and I cut out two more pieces because I wanted to do two layers on the sleeve like I did with the silky dress and I didn't decide until after I'd sewn it onto the bodice that I wanted to do two so we'll get into that a little bit later but to make the pattern for the sleeve I just used a sleeve pattern that I had for a uh, Pride and Prejudice style dress where it has like a little puff sleeve so I just used that to draft that and I just made it a little bit thicker at the bottom.
While we're watching me do the sleeve wrong, I just wanted to tell you what I did for the top because I did end up adding boning to this, but I did it to the inside of the lining. So I just sewed strips onto the inside, one down the center of the front and then two diagonal um, right beside it. And then I sandwiched that inside of the outer layer and the lining. And so I sewed boning channels into those little strips and then I put in the three little boning right there. And then I also put two boning strips in the back right next to the grommets. So it is a very structured bodice, but you won't see the boning from the front, which is what I really like about that method. And here you can see me sewing on the sleeve, the single layered sleeve wrong. <laughs> and then after much frustration, that's when I decided to cut out the second sleeve and do the double layer like the silky dress. After I did the double layer and I had done the princess seam on it and then I put room for the elastic, I was able to sew it onto the bodice and then after that I put the elastic into it so it could get that scrunched up puff at the top and then I would gather the um, bottom so I could attach it to the sparkly material for the rest of the sleeve. For the sparkly sleeve, I just kind of cut out a rectangle and then I ended up having to just fit it to myself and I had to sew it like three times and just to get it the right shape and the right tightness that I wanted. So it's pretty much just a rectangle and then you sew it onto the puff sleeve and then you hem it. Here you can see me adding the gather bottom of the puff sleeve to the shiny sleeve below you can't see it because it's underneath but i am sewing those together and so when i turn it inside out it'll be attached the next thing i did was i sewed on the bias tape the sage green one that i went out and bought for the bodice and then put the grommets in and the top was done so now it was time to move on to the skirt this was the most seam encasing i have ever done on a project so i did a princess seam on all of the edges of the skirt and then for the edge um, where I had the opening so I could get it on. I ended up folding it over twice for each of the um, edges, so that was also encased. Boy oh boy, did I put a lot of effort into this. After that, I slightly pleated the top because I did cut out triangles, so it wasn't big squares that I needed heavy pleating for, but it did need some pleating, so I just did that, and then after that, I was able to do the waistband, and I did add some grommets to the top of the waistband so it could close almost like a corset, and then she was all done after some hemming. I'm very happy with how this turned out. I was not expecting it to turn out this good, and this gives me hope for future projects to turn out this good because I actually managed it. And even with all like the random fabrics and stuff, it turned out looking really good. And I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I am planning on doing other big, like, well, more well-known cartoon dresses, but I just had the fabric for this, and I figured I'd give it a shot. And it worked, and it's beautiful. If you want to see more of this, then like and subscribe because I am planning on doing some more cartoon dresses like Belle, Jane, we'll see. But uh, if you like this, I post on, I'm just going to scratch Wednesdays for now until I actually post on a Wednesday. I post Fridays at noon. So if you liked what I did, then I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.